Good evening. And welcome everyone to Bad Fan Fiction Live. My name is Master Gamington Smythe the Third. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another night of Bad Fan Fiction. I trust everyone is doing very well, especially after the last week when we finished off the My Immortal Tril Trilogy. Yes, Trinity. We'll call that the Holy Trinity, as it were. As it was the Gothic Trilogy. But anyway, I hope everyone is doing very well tonight, and I hope that we can all have a lovely time. And I would very much like to know if there's new people in the chat, so do let us know if this is your first time here. I would be very much appreciated to know if this is this is your first time. Ah, uh, Kelly Opie Cat's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Absolutely jolly good. Birthdays are always smashing. But in any case, uh, just before we begin, uh, just a little note that do... Keep an eye on the Muffin Fund link. I have just put that in the description right there. And just give what you can, but it is not mandatory. But just getting that out of the way. Now, the reason why I've called this to be... This was going to be One Piece, but after doing My Immortal, I kind of got the bug, as it were. Mondo, mono gibberish, new to the chat. Alex King, long time watcher, first time live chatter. Welcome, welcome. Mentro, welcome. Um, that silver hedgehog, welcome, welcome. David Emmerich, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, Irish, welcome, welcome. Nazeramon, welcome to the live stream. Ah, excellent. Got a good cl clutch of new viewers. Jolly good. But I kind of got the bug for long form fan fiction and dedicating things to long form fan fiction. And upon my travels, I did come across Harry Potter Prayers and Miracles, which is the Christian adaptation of Harry Potter. <clears throat> However, before we did that, I managed to find something even better. This one describing about Metroid. Samus and Ripley, the two main rivals of that franchise. A very underrated franchise, too. And, um... Yes, thank you, A. Melodies. Melodies has provided the link, so if you wish to read along, then we can actually get this in. So, let us get on with it, then. So, by the author's name, 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 Chan in the title Metroid High School. In an alternate timeline, Samus and Ridley go to high school together. What will happen? Nobody knows. Final chapter up now! Well, that's jolly good, isn't it? That means we can actually get a proper conclusion. Excellent, excellent. Jolly D, jolly D. Hello, people. This is kind of a weird story, but I think it's cool, so I hope you like it. This is my first story, so no flamies. Flamies. <laughs> no flamies, everybody. Thanks, Kay. Lol. Chapter 1. The Big Dance. It was three days before the big dance. Ridley walked up to Samus. He was really nervous. He had never gone on a date before. And Smouse was really, really pretty. So he finally got enough courage and went up to her locker. Uh, Samus? Samus looked up. What do you want? Uh, do you, uh, do, do, do you want to, uh, go, like, the dance with me? Samus said. Okay. <gasps> Ridley was really, really happy. He was going to go on his first big date. Whoa! thought Ridley. I hope Samus is my girlfriend. I'm the luckiest guy in the damn school. Three days later, it was the big dance. Everyone was there. Hey, Ridley, a voice sneered. Oh, damn it, exclaimed Ridley. Oh, no, it's Craven's gang. Overwalked Craig and his cronies. What do you want, blubber brain? Samus inquisited. Well, well, well. 
Looks like little Ridley's got himself a girlfriend. Ooh. Watch it, blubber brain, or I'll blow you and your little crew way up in the air, Samus responded. Kate's eyes narrowed. Looks like you win this time, but don't you worry, we'll be back. Come on, boys, Craig declared. Everyone in Craig's gang laughed and walked away. Samus and Ridley were all alone. Don't mind those damn people, Samus. They're like stupid people. Yeah, I know, answered Samus. Then the music started playing really slow. People everywhere started slow dancing. Really spin around on me? Hey, um, like, Samus? D do you want to dance? Ridley proposed. Samus looked down. I, I never learned how to dance before, she declared. Ridley smiled. Don't, don't worry. It's like totally easy. Samus smiled nervously. Okay. And they started to dance. Wow, Samus alleged. It's really easy. And they danced until it was time to go home. At the end of the night, Samus and Ridley were walking home. Uh, S -S Samus? I love you, Ridley declared. Really? inquired Samus. Yeah. Uh, Ridley? Yeah, Samus? I love you too, Samus described. And then in the soft moonlight, the two lovers kissed. But then it was cut short because the Azimuth had to go home now. See you tomorrow, Samus! Ridley exclaimed. Damn, thought Ridley. I'm like the luckiest guy in the world, dude. Oh, such a touching beginning to the story. Jolly dear. Jolly dear. Chapter 2 Thank you so much for the good reviews. I'm so sorry it took so long to update, but I'll try to write more often now. Okay, I talk too much. Here we go. Chapter 2. Sleepover of Surprises. Part 1. One day, Samus and Ridley and her friends Ted, Mandy, Robbie, 111, Samus, Ridley, Forever, 2006. There we go, the author's inserted himself. Helen and Tio Juan were at a sleepover. Samus's parents were off on a business trip and weren't at home so they could do whatever. What should we do now, Samus quizzed her, quizzed her friends. I know, declared Ted. Let's play truth or dare. True that, Samus and Co said. I don't know how to play, confessed Tio Juan. Tio Juan, everyone groaned. Then they laughed really loud. Ha ha ha! Except one, one, one Samus Ridley Forever 2006. Who was too cool to laugh, am I right? It's really easy, said Helen, who had been Tio Juan's neighbor and best friend since kindergarten. Helen and Tio Juan secretly like each other, but were always too afraid to tell each other their true felonies. Felonies? Why would you want to tell your partner your crime record? All you have to do is take to take turns and ask truth or dare, and then the person will choose one, and you have to choose a question for them that they have to answer no matter what. And if they choose dare, then you choose a dare that they have to do, and it's really funny, explained Helen. A-okay. Declared Tier 1. Everyone sheared. How about Samus goes goes first? Risley proposed slyly. Oh, brother, Samus groaned. Looks like I'm out of damn luck, Samus conceded. Truth or dare, Ridley smiled like a bear. Truth. Riddle, riddle me this. The puns, the puns, children, the puns, riddled Ridley. Have you ever stolen something? All eyes turned to Samus as she fiddled with her fingers. Well, there was this one time. Go on, Ridley many hly stated. Well, I was at Keaton's general store, and there was this Green Day CD I wanted, and I didn't have enough money, so... Well, Samus was embarrassed. 
<laughs> really expecting some really loud. Mm hmm. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 side ruling her eyes. You and your petty crimes, like, especially for such a sellout band. I'm so, so cool. Wow, you're so angsty, noticed Ted. Ugh, 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 moaned and went back to filing her nails with a nail filer. Everyone laughed really loud. <laughs> Except 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, who the joke was directed at. Okay, 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 okay. I think it's Ted's turn. Well, the well, okay, cool, whatever, yo. Ted coolly replied with a snap. Everyone rolled their eyes and giggled, except while 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, who was too busily listening to My Chemical Romance on her iPod Nano. The flashbacks. The flashbacks, children. The flashbacks. The flashbacks. I need a drink. Oh boy. What do you choose? Everyone wondered. Dare, Ted D snapped. Well then, Mr. Snappy, let's see you snap at this one, was Samus Clever's remark. Everyone laughed, except for... Who couldn't hear her because our iPod was too loud. We're going to spin a bottle, and you have to kiss whoever the bottle lands on. Oh no, Ted lamented. But what if this tier won? Well, you have to do anyway, because that's the rules of the game, Samus affirmed. I have a bottle, Mandy made known to the people. The bottle spun around and Arunod and Arundo. <laughs> the bottle spun around and Arunod and Arundo until it finally landed on 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006. Oh, looks like I have to kiss 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006. Ted announced. Uh, very well. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 anxiously agreed to. But this is only for this stupid game. You never have or ever will have a chance with me. Yeah, okay, Ted mentioned. And he sneakily stalked over to 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 and got really close. Let's just over with... Then Ted leaned down and gave her a kiss. And everyone giggles and he tried to put his hands in her hair, but she did not let him. And she slapped him and it hurt because she was really strong. In your dreams, bubble brain. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 pwned. Hey, my brain is not made out of rubber, Ted pointed out. I'm not so sure about that, Robbie snapped back. Hey, everyone laughed, except 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, who didn't think the joke was very funny. Okay, okay, okay. It's Tio Juan's turn. Everyone agreed. Uh, uh, croaked Tio Juan. Uh, I choose truth. Okay, we get to ask one question, Summers reminded Tio Juan. What is your deepest, darkest secret? Tio Juan looked nervous. Oh, I, like, I like someone in this room. That statement brought out a lot of commotion, because everyone wanted to know who Tier 1 liked, except who 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, because she was completely uninterested. Is it Samus? Is it Mandy? Is it 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006? Actually, Tier 1 wrapped his arm around Helen, who was sitting next to him, and closed in and gave her a very big kiss. Everyone cheered and clapped their hands! Yay! Except for 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, who was downstairs pouring herself a glass of lemonade. Helen, Tier 1 said after they were done kissing, well, I've always loved you since I met you, but I was too afraid to tell you. Tier 1, I love you too, Helen confirmed. And the two lovebirds kissed again again, until everyone told them to stop, except for 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006, who wasn't back from getting a soda yet. A-okay. Tier 1 shouted, let's finish the game. Okay, if you want me to write more, then please review. Who knows what will happen next, okay? Chapter 3. Oh, this is when it gets interesting. Now let's re read the bold text, everyone. Okay, everyone. I read a lot more fanfiction now. 
Oh dear. And I think it's time Metroid High School should take on a darker tone now. I'm so sorry that thy updates have been so far apart, but hey, I e only do the best I can, right? Thank alls for the reviews. Thank alls to you too. By the way, this chapter is dedicated to Game Dude, who inspired me to start writing again. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Game Dude. Chapter 3. Samus is Pregnant. Samus and Ridley had been going out for six months now. It was a coincidence considering that most teenage relationship exists for two months, according to a video. Everyone was really surprised, because they hadn't expected the relationship to last so long. Not even the Sames or Ridley thought it would last so long, and that says things. Right now, Samus and R Rildy were at Ridley's house. Ridley's parents weren't at home because of a business trip, and Samsu didn't have to be home until 1 o'clock. Right now, it was only 11.30. They were on the couch, and it was quiet. So, uh, Samus, uh, like, what do you think of, uh, world politics? Ridley made conversely. Ridley, I don't care about things like that, Samus asserted. Ah, Ridley admitted. There was a kind of oif silence that happens when people don't know what to say to each other in a relationship, but Ridley has something on his mind. Uh, Samus? Ridley approached. Yes, Ridley? Samus' question answered. You know h how well we've been going out for a long time? Like, longer than the average? Well, I agree. Samus nodded. Well, you know, uh, you see... Ridley seemed unholy. Ridley, I understand what you mean. Samus understood. Samus, are you sure about... Ridley started. But it was too late. It started as an innocent kiss. It ended up as much more than they could barrigan for. One 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 one. It's a bit strange. The next morning, Samus wasn't sure where she was. Then she remembered that she was at Ridley's house. Then she noticed that she was in Ridley's bed. Then she noticed that she was naked. Ah! Samus woke up the whole neighborhood. Like Samus. Is something wrong? Ridley noticed that he woke up. Oh no! He fearfully exclaimed. Ridley? What if... If... Samus worried. Ridley was cooler and didn't lose his cool. Do... It's okay. My friend told me that it can't happen the first time. So like, never worry. It's okay. Ridley ascertained. Um, okay. <laughs> Seamus tried to convince herself. <laughs> Oh, okay there. Oh, Samus Aran's now turned into a famous Aran. So, we need to have a picture of Samus Aran with a little pot of gold, and then in green, and having the red hair, and just basically being like, zero suits Seamus. <laughs> right, right. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. After all, who doesn't think it could happen? It could happen up to just one time. Unfortunately, they were dead wrong. One 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 one. It had been some weeks since Samus was at Helen's house. Mandy and Sa one 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 Samus Ridley Forever two thousand and six were there too. It was the morning, and Samus was feeling a little sick. The problem was everyone was healthy in her friends and family, so it wasn't likely the cold or the cholera. Remember, kids. If you have if you have a cold and you're not sure whether it was a cold, it might be the cholera. Ooh. Something was up, and Helen was about ready to explode. Samus, I think we have an emergency. Helen imploded. Okay, okay, calm down, Mandy. Control. She was the kind of girl who could keep her cool in a disaster. Samus, we're all worried, but there's only one way to, oh, to be sure. Implied Mandy. Samus looked at her feet. But where do I get one of those? Samus speculated. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 broke up the silence. I have one. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 made known. She reached in her black handbag and picked up a small wrapper with something in it. Everyone was shrouded in disbelief. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006? Why do you have a pregnancy test in your pocket? Helen posed. Everyone except 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 thought it was a reasonable question. 
One 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 sadness Ridley Forever two thousand and six rolled her eyes. <laughs> Dude, I like have a life, you know. One 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 Samus Ridley Forever two thousand and six controversially declared. Okay then, Helen calmed down. The only way to be safe is well Samus, are you ready, Hedlin Pride? Samus was not ready, but it was the only way she could be safe. Okay, Samus decided. It's tough. Samus was in Helen's bathroom. She couldn't believe that this was happening. Yet if... No. She wasn't going to think about it. Samus tried to calm down, but it was too hard. Only two minutes. One minute. Samus held her breath and took a look. Oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. Samus distrusted tr tr Ted. Say it ain't so. Oh, my horror, say it ain't so. Somewhere in the town, a phone was ringing. It was Ridley's cell phone. Ridley picked it up. Uh, hello? Ridley answered. He was confused because on the other end of the phone, there was silence. Then he heard Samus say four words that would change her life. Ridley, I'm Prage Nent. Sorry if there are any typos. I I'm terrible at that kind of thing. This will probably end up being about three parts of the story. Look out for part two, coming soon, or whenever. By the way, I had to edit some parts of this to make it PG-13, so if you want the full chapter, just email me, okay? Author's note, review R&R. &R. Chapter four. The Cholera Conspiracy. Ridley could not believe it. In fact, he originally suspected conspiracy, but it was much more than he could expect. He'd bitten off far too much to chew, and now no conspiracy could explain the situation he'd landed himself in. Or could it? Samus was at Dr. Bannis's office to have her baby checked. She was worried because she'd never been pregnant before. Ridley had told her not to worry, and that it would all work out. But Samus couldn't help but feel that Ridley was hiding something from her. Little did she know that there was a surprise on the horizon. Samus? There is a problem, Dr. Bannis addressed. Samus was not amused. What is it? Samus cautiously gandered. It seems that there was a, a repercussion of your sins, Dr. Bannis scolded. Samus was shocked by the lack of religious toleration in the establishment. What seems to be the issue? Samus countered as she narrowed her eyes. Well, I don't know how to say this, but you've got... Samus held her breath and could not believe what she heard next. It was a tragedy in the making, and she was the protagonist. The Cholera. Samus fell onto her bed and was broken into tears. It was impossible. It was impractical. There was no way it could have happened, but it did. Samus was crying because her life was ruined by the cholera, but there was another reason because Ridley had had to have gotten the cholera from someone else, and Ridley had never mentioned anything of the sort. It was a mystery, and someone was try riring to find out. Aaron do that time, Helen decided to give her friend a call. She was worried because Samus had just experienced her first pregnancy exam, and it was time to hear the results. Samus' phone ring, and she picked it up. Hello? she inquired, the person on the receiving line. Samus, how did it go? Hammond grilled her, gr Helen grilled her girlfriend. Helen, there was a surprise. Samus tearfully made known to appear. Is it a good surprise? Helen hoped for the best. Samus put up walls to catch her cool and composure. <laughs> Helen, I have the cholera, she declared with vengeance. Ah! exclaimed Helen with a scream of the gods. It couldn't be. But then... Maybe. Samus, there might be something you should know. 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006. She has the cholera too. Samus hung up the phone. She was in disbelief. It... it made sense. But it couldn't be. It was too much of a conspiracy for the truth. Or was it? For the third time, a phone had rang. Erdely cautiously picked it up, not knowing the full life consequences on the other end. It was Samus. 
She was disapproving. Ridley, have you had an affair with 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006? Samus scorned. Ridley was backed into a corner. It was time for this conspiracy to be brought to an end. Uh, Samus? Like, a long time ago? Before you and I were a pair? 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 and I, uh... Well... Samus was embarrassed. Ridley, you should have told me! Now I have the cholera! I can't believe you! Side splitted Samus. I was too much to handle. You were too much to handle, Samus Ridley Forever 2006. Samus, I... Started Ridley, before he was cut off by his scorned girlfriend. Save it, Samus delivered with dark passion. I need time. Time. Sorry that it was kind of a short chapter, but I have big surprises coined soon. By the way, I'm looking for people as secondary characters in the next few chapters. If you want to be included in the story, just send a review and put the name that you want me to use in the story. This is going to be so cool. Until next time, author's new note, review, R&R. &R. Chapter 5 the Dark Supreyes. Time. Three weeks had been passed since Simbk the Cholera Sonspiracy. And for Samus it was just the beginning. Dark lights had confused her soul, and it was a burden that she could not comprehend. She sat in her bed, grasping at the straws that had come loose. Straws that poisoned the water of life. Lightness. Darkness. Samus could not understand the fellings that gripped her apart over the three weeks. Forces were turning her away, but it was a force that could not be explained with the words. Grip was squeezing her like a lemon, the real kind, not the freaky, juicy kind. It was like a dream, only this time it was for real, fake reality. It sat like acting like a chainsaw. And she could not go back to Ridley. Not now. Not like the past. She knew that she was still loved. But there was something that was impossible to ever go back. Temporary. Longevity. All of a sudden, Samus screamed. She was losing control over her conscious. And there was a new force rising. It was like Samus. Only it was dark Samus instead. She could barely fight to take over her actions. And she was becoming weird. It was impossible to know what would happen next, until it happened. This was her cholera, but soon she knew it could not contain confession, possession, obsession. Ridley knew that there was a crisis, and he was meeting at his house. There was also Ted, Robbie, Tio Juan, and Smiley, the new kid. The tension was emergency, and it was, was about to implode. What am I going to do? Detonated Ridley. Dude, calm down. It's all cool. Smiley conformed. I'm not so sure that's a great assuage. Ted confusingly used vocabulary that not everyone knew. Okay, everyone. We need not to panic, and we need to think of a salute to Tio Juan dictated. Everyone was quiet, and they all thought about the problem. It was quite conundrum, and there was not a salute point that everyone could think of. Samus was not forgiving, and especially she was acting strange, like she was becoming dark. Ridley did not like to think about this, and he didn't. Little did he know that there was much more to think than he threw. If it was, if I was you, I'd apologize to the girl and say I'm sorry. Smiley permitted cool. People agreed with this but Ridley was not so cleverly amused. But when would I do? Ridley contended. Tomorrow, everyone cons consensused, and it was agreed. But little did the meeting know that there was a new darkness on the Horisioin. Darkness. It was a day at Metroid High School, and things were bright and sunny. It was like the day that Ridley asked out Samus, but it was not that day ago. Ridley was ready to apologize, but something was strange. There was a crowd, and Rildy wanted to see what the commotion was. It turned out that there was a new kid, and he wore a black cloak 
with some chains, and he had blue hair that was natural that he didn't die. When he walked, he was hot angsty, and he had a bad ass. When someone asked him to what his name was, he said it was Cervantes. Cervantes! Ridley engraved in stone. It was a name he never knew, but he would never forget. It was a name he never knew, but he would never forget. Okay. You see, there was a problem that was right around the corner, and Ridley could not bargain for the future. Samus was on a chair being angsty, and Cervantes thought that she was her type. He sat down next to her and began to woo her with his color. Hello, Cervantes began. Hi, returned Samus. You look very beautiful, and you're angsty, Cervantes related. I'll uh, see you around. Samus was amazed by this man. He thought he was beautiful, and they just met. But was angsty good? No. Yes, no, yes. No, yes. Samus was battling herself, and she almost missed the boat. She would think about to this later, but not later, as she decided. Inside her head, there was another battle. Samus against Dark Samus. Cholera against Samus. It was a battle that could not be broken, and so Sarah Gent could explain the situation. It was too late. Too late. Too late. After school, Samus was confronted by Ridley, who was anticipated. The day had been very long, and he was ready to make up for the problems he had created. But was Samus? I'm sorry, Rildy apologized to little effect. It's too late for love, Samus deflated his balloon. Ridley was out of his mind. But what are you talking about? He disillusioned. Ridley, I'm Cervantes' girlfriend now. Samus shocked the populace. Time stood still, but kept going for Ridley. This was impossible to comprehend. What the hell? But Samus, what about- But Ridley was cut off because Cervantes came out of the door and dared with Debonair. Goodbye, Samus ultimated, and Ridley was left alone in the cold. Too old. Too cold. Ah! Samus fought with Dark Samus for control. She could not believe she dumped her boyfriend, but it was too late. Or not. Dark Samus, you suck! Badmouth Samus. Ha ha ha, little girl. The cholera will soon devour you, and I will control your body. Dark Samus snapped back. Samus snarled at her opponent and continued the battle would determine. Cervantes and Samus went to many places that were like cool, like Hot Topic, and other places that Anstey cool people chill. Maybe they bumped into Ebony. They ate some things, but the date was over pretty quick when it had started. Samus remembered her first date with Ridley, but Dark Samus was in control, and there was no stopping the lust. Let's go to my house, Cervantes proposed. Samus was wary of this request, but she was overcome with passion and was battled by the cholera her good judgment. There was little to do now, just hope. At Ridley's house, Ridley was depressed. He had screwed up his relationship. And now he was listening to depressing music. He was afraid that he might become emo, and it was likely. More likely than he could think. He also was thinking about darker things. But it wasn't true. No, it was. No, it wasn't. This was Ridley's battle, and he had things to overcome as well, if he could. Samus was naked and passionate, just like that long ago, but it was different. Because it wasn't Ridley, it was Cervantes. She was exploding in lust, but she kept feeling that it was wrong. But Dark Samus was in control. There was little she could do. This day had been a mind blow, and it was only going to get worse from here, she knew. As Samus fell asleep in Cervantes, murky thoughts cloudy her mind. Dark. Light. Ridley. Cervantes. Love. Lust. Redemption. This chapter was dark but good. I have another one on the way, so don't worry and R and R if you please. Thanks to everyone whose name I used, and if you want your name used, just tell me. Hope you liked! 
By the way, thank you very much to the electric calf. Your your pledge and donation has been very much appreciated. All he says is, take it and be proud. And uh, you should read that chapter as Gokis. Um, unfortunately, I don't do Goku impersonations because that's done by the Master Coex chap. I'm Master Gamington Smythe. And as such, I don't know who this Gokis is. Chapter 6 Samus joins the football team. Prequel 1. So this is a prequel. Gring, ring, bing. What the shit? Samus ran, woke up from slumber, and realized the clock was broken. It was late for school. Thousand! I'm late for tests! Samus qualmed as she dressed from her clothes. Samus was not the kind of girl who obsessed over clothes and popular songs, so she did not worry about appearances, even though she was still pretty smoking hot. At least Ridley, lol. Late again, is C? snapped Quip Miss Chozo. Samus was adopted. Her parents were killed from unknown reason, like in games. No time for talks, ma'am. I must catch the bell, Samus Average teamed, and left Mrs. Chozo and her dog Sparky in dust and even forgot her lunch. What are we going to do with you? Sarcasm the missus. She turned on midwife shows like Dr. Phil and Judge Alex and rhetoricated with Sudoku. Not suicide. The game. Journey songs. Don't stop believing. Out of breath, Samus stealthed into homeroom in time so her non-teacher mother brain would not notice and succeeded just like in Metroid Fusion. She sat down next to her friend Amy who was as pretty as Samus and had bright red hair that sparkled red light and sun. Amy was kind of obsessed with fantasy stuff and was obsessed with dragons and Harry Potter and Aragon and stuffs. They were just in time for announcements. And, and now the news, casted Principal Gumpei Yukoi. Today, there are football trying outs for every sex, even girls. Classrooms giggled about the word he said, but Sam's was intrigued. <laughs> girls. <laughs> football was a sport for boys, but what about girls? After all, Amelia Armstrong made it clear that girls could do things as boys, so why not Samus, who was pretty damn good at the ball? Know what I'm saying? Also, Craden gang, please no more of the hazing or suspension will ensue. Rubber stammered Principal Yokoi. All is all. All is all indeed. All of Samus's girlfriends, not the love kind. Girls can be friends, not gay. We're talking about boys and hot and music, but Samus was phased because she was thinking about football. Earth to Samus, Mandy levied. Do you agree that Noxus is the hottest than ever Zac Efron or Ted Emmanuel? What? Well, whatever, whatever. Samus coldly brushed and strode off for practice. What's her net? Was all her girlfriends could wonder, as Samus strolled down halls and signed you over for practice. When Smouse signs up for trying football, an unexpected harassment or peer pressure happens. Oh, Samus is joining Ningginging the football team, rowdied Craig and his crony gang. They also made fun of Samus for parts of girls that are not to be spoken. Unexpectable, scorned Mother Brain, since she was a nun and was not tolerant about jokes such as that. But it was too late, because everyone was laughing at Samus for being a girl for football. Even a girlfriend snicked a tad snavely. Snicked a tad snavely. <laughs> kind of weird. Samus was running away, but she heard a voice that sounded shady but well-meaning. Psst, you. Yeah, you. I have a solution, avouched the voice. Samus looked, and it was a truce, a kid that seemed that she was more into sketchy than into school. If you want help, you'll need to talk to the game dude, Trace commanded. Take me, submits Samus, who was kind of worried that the situation might turn into per pressure and even drugs, but was eager for help for football. The room she was taken to was secret, and not even a teacher could find it. There were computers and montiors everywhere, the eye could see, with darkness, and even some things that couldn't, shouldn't do, sell or do in school. In the middle was a figure in a swivel chair that was facing the other side. Wheel, well, well. What do we have? Swiveled around the game dude. No one knew his name, but he was a sort of like the king or puppet master or mafia of the school. 
Wherever there was a trouble, he was sure a safe bet. Trace Sly smiled. A girl here is a bit of trouble fitting in on football and needs some help from underground. Trace blazoned. The game dude took a bit of description at Samus and nodded and swiveled away. Ah, Samud, he dictated. You've been quite a help to me in the past. Like when you beat up Craid when he owed me money. I may be able to help you out. Samus was puxled. However can it work, she pondered aloud. The game dude amused. Disguise. There were many people who were trying out at football, and practice was about to begin. What, what, what about Samus? All of a sudden, a boy with a metal suite, even with a helmet and arm cannon, and special features came in. Everyone was surprised because they did not recognize the figure, and they thought the suit was damn. But then Coach Houston came in and started the practice. Okay, everyone, looks like the red like to begin. Since there are no girls, it looks like we can talk about sex and man stuff. Uh, I'm gonna put on the right tone. Okay, everyone, it looks like it's ready to begin. Since there are no girls, it looks like we can talk about sex and man stuff and penises. Coach Human Houston womanized. Since boys are pigs, especially teens, everyone laughed loud and made sounds except for Samus, who was trying to fit in and not seem uncomfortable. You! In the metal suit! What are your name? And what the hell? Houston profaned. Samus shuffled her fet. My name is, uh, Justin Bailey. And I have to have this suit because I'm allergic to pollutants like global <laughs> warming. <laughs> Stuttered Samus. Sap, liberal! Murmured Houston. Okay, anyways, take positions and play the ball. Everyone took positions. Samus decided to be a runbacker. Adam Malvich was a quarterback. Weevil, Spire, and Craid were linbacks, and Key Hunter and Kendon were a wide retriever. Oh, I bet they were. There were others, but unimportant. The game went well, and Samus was a star. Even Adam, the quarterback, was impressed. Hey, Justin, we should hang out sometime. You seem cool. Adam accepted her. He did not know Samus was a girl, but how would anyone? Okay. Samus gruff voice masked, and was excited that Adam thought that she was cool. Wow! Mr. Bailey, please come to my office, Houston bumbled. Samus was still in power suit and went inside. There were football trophies and a poor Tourette of Gary Ford on the wall. Author's note, my friend explained that Gary Ford was offered to be on the NFL, but decided to run for president instead. I don't know about history, but hey, not bad. Justin... You seem to be good at football, the coach complimented. Maybe you'll be the NFL. Yes, that's right. The whole entire NFL is just one person. Or even a lawyer. <laughs> okay. You can either play football or you can be a lawyer. Those are totally two of the same things. Uh, yeah, I've got a doctorate, Samus Wright lied. She left the coach and ran to change out of the power suit that was sweaty. She took a shower and with them went to sleep. The next day there was a big game. The team was training and Adam was taking time to know Samus, uh, Justin. So Justin, you must be new to MHS, Adam keenly observed. Samus was nervous but nodded. That's cool. If you need any help, just call and I'll assist, Adam convented. I see. Thanks, Samus. Time for the game. The game started and everything did good. Samus played as well as Peyton Brady and was an accession to the team. They were losing only 23-22 at the last 30 seconds. The ball was thrown to Samus and she touched down, but only one problem. The helmet came off. The game was won, but everyone was shocking. <gasps> Ooh, girl, crooned Craig and Gang, and Samus was embarrassed. Houston was freaking out because of the girl on team, but Adam stood in shock. Justin, you're... Samus? Adam was shocked into submission. Samus was embarrassed. You're fired, Hoiston trumped, but Adam stepped in. If she's fired, I'm fired, Adam intervened. What the hell? Blustered the coach, but he had to give in because of civil rights amendment and the law. But there was still a problem left. But Samus... There is only one room for showering. Samus was shocked for ten seconds was almost embarrassing. 
But then she decided that, hey, girls can do anything as boys, even showering. Everyone clapped for the first girl ever to play football in Metroid High School. And she was avoided by Principal Yokoi for her attendance. Who knows? Maybe a championship. And as for Adam, well, it might be love. Conceivably. Hint, hint. <laughs> Lol, funny twist. Okay, thanks for reading, and remember to review and sign the petitions. Also, please read my internet boyfriend's stuff, especially the Warhammer thing, and his favourite Pirates of the Caribbean freight train confessions. And as always, please tell me if you want to be in the story, and you will. More soon, ah la. Actually, this is quite a sizable thing. This is on the penultimate chapter, by the way. Hello! Okay, I'm so sorry that I took so long to write again. Thanks for everyone staying the course and remembering the story. That's so cool! 52 reviews! Even bads are good. Okay, lots of things have happened since last time. And sorry it's been a time. Serventas and I aren't a internet dating, only friends now, but we're still happy and it's pretty cool. He still wants people to read things and he's going to have new stuff soon, so check it out. Also, I've taken new classes like special English to learn new words and even make some up. My friends made a new law that we can't use said anymore in stories, so there's more spice and less crap if you catch the drift. Also, I've learned more politics and understandings from Cervantes, so they'll be referencing today's issues if you notice, because they're hidden. This chapter's dedicated to Sir Sarcasm, because even though you're not being real and mean, the joke's on you, because you wrote a nice review, even though you're so mean. <laughs> chapter 7. Election Insurrection. Samus ran? What the hell? Samus Miss Chozo freaked out at the teen. Samus had powers, but not mind control, so she couldn't figure the deal. Unfortunately, the deal was clear, because Samus had a D in history -o. And Chozo was a major. Samus, this is un unacceptable under this house. You must succeed, or there will be capital punishment. Samus de facto mom vengeance. Samus wanted to be a teen in descent and eye roll, but she was afraid of her legal guardian and didn't want to make moves that would make things mad, or she wouldn't be able to go to the mall with Helen and Mandy anymore. And what about even boys? Uh, okay. I'll think of something. Samus can casual as she ran off to Cho classes leaving Chozo mom in a dust bowl. Minorities. Mrs. Chozo backslashed. <laughs> oh. uh. In school, school hadn't begun, but Samus was taking time to convey the message to her friends and it was almost an apocalypse. My history D is going to destroy my life, Samus exclaimed to everyone in the entire city who heard. Even construction work has dropped. Okay, dude, it's not the end of the world yet. There still could be time, situation controlled Amy, who tried her best from turning it into a disaster. But everyone knew a problem. It was only two weeks until grades were in, and what was there to do? Questions were stopped because... Hello and slip, dip and cop, flop, clip and sop, stop, fizzle, sliz. Hello and slip, dip and cop, flop, clip and slip, ditch, fizzle, <laughs> Oh, oh, that's rivaling what's the dilly filly. Hello and slip, dip and cop, flop, clip and sip, ditch, fizzle, sliz. Principal Yokoi embarrassed. He tried to be Dean, but everyone only groaned and laughed at his like legit, and he was embarrassed, but the new continued. Today, the majority legislator decided that if anyone in the state becomes class president, that they have an automated A in history from experience and leadership, the principal announced to populists. Not everyone cared about politicrap, but Samus liked the A clause. Note, Clauses are our constitution or law or something, and it says that things happen like freedoms or A's and things. In other news, President Candon was impeached yesterday because stealing school money and using it to fund hedges in the parking lot and buy pork barrels for the hockey team, so there's going to be a total recall on next Tuesday. The class knew that Candon was hungry for power and food, 
but wow, who'd have guessed this Nixonics? And who would be drafted? Samus was on her way out to school from another day of MHS when she heard a sketch voice echo down the corridor. Psst! Hello? Samus warded off spirits, but it wasn't a spirit, it was only Trace. Samus, the game dude was black hacking into power school, and he noticed the problem with your history in the D. Oh, history and the D, eh? Trace intimidated. Normally, Samus would have frecked from the breach of school amendment, but she knew that Trace was a man of fine points. What are you getting to? Samus cut to the chase. Hmm, hasty girl. Tracy smiled with a grin. The thing is that the game dude and I formed an exploratory commission, and we've decided that you would be a possible candidate to lead the school in the turtle recall. And if you win then, Trace left the less up to Samus's imagination. Samus had never thought about policy and governmental duty before, but this was an intrigue before because she remembered the new A clause from the news this morning, and knew that if she didn't get an A somehow, that she'd have to take the fifth or suffer the consequence. I'll think about it. Samus non-committed, but secretly everyone knew the realities. It was going to be an election, but would there be an insurrection? Oh gosh, this is carry on long. The next day, school started. Samus had already cleansed her mind and her decision was clear. But first she had to choose to go to a party. She knew from school news that Republicans liked to kill trees, but she liked trees, so she became democratic. If only it was easy as that. So everyone, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton like trees. And Donald Trump and Ted Cruz don't. That's pretty much how you summarize it. If you ask, what does the, what does the candidate stand for? Ask them, do you like trees? Okay, welcome to the Democrat Cacus, invited Amy to everyone because she was the leader woman of the Democrats in the school committee, and she could run meetings and primaries, and was also a speaker in school senate, but no one cares about student council, so whatever. Today is when we choose who will run for president, so if there are any nomination snows this time to commit, advocated Amy. There were heads that rolled, but in the end, people made decisions. I nominate Tier 1, Helen endorsed her favourite boyfriend. Some people laughed at his name, but they were kicked out of the party because of anti-immigration. Okay, are there any other um, nominees? Amy wandered aloud to the community. I nominate Samus, Adam Malkovich. He and Samus were almost going out, so this was a shoe in Author's note, this is before Samus and Ridley met, so don't freak out, he's not forgotten, okay? Okay, that closes the nomination, so it's time to rock the votes. Amy used MTV language. So how caucuses work is that candidates stand in corners and then people walk over and whoever has more people wins and is nominated, Amy explained to multitudes. When she gave the signal, people walked over to the corner for Samus or Tier 1. It was really close at at the beginning, but near the end, more people went to Samus because not everyone was too keen on having a Mexico president and plus Samus was kind of hot. Thank you, voters, and congratulations to Samus Aran, who will now be voted at the Total Recall. Everyone pledged delegates to the football queen, even Tier 1 because he was still friends and a Democrat. Samus had won the Democrats, but what about the election? For the rest of the day... Samus was congratulated by people in the school, except not everyone, because Republicans were not quite as keen on Iranian policies. Before the day was over, Trace and Amy wanted to have a word with the candidate. Good job on the nomination, but here's the deal, Amy began with a sentence. This election is going to be a tough one, but you're going to have to have some help. Trace and I will be campaign managers, because I can help out with Democrat votes, and Trace can use underground connections to help with election totals. Amy finished up as Trace nodded with slight little grin. Well, okay, this is good, but who am I up against? Samus pondered as she awaited results from her staffers. At lunch, the Republicans had their primary, and Captain Falcon was chosen as the victor. Yes! Trace slyly foxed. Helen and Samus were not pleased at the news and reflected it with their demeanors. Captain Falcon was very popular because he was the captain of the track team and held every record, even some that were made up just for him. 
Some people said that he cheated by using a race car instead of running. No shit. But his parents had shitloads of money, so they paid judges and everyone was okay. Hmm. It's time for strategy, Amy began the plan. Okay. So Captain Falcon will probably try use money to win, but if we speak the truth and say what's right, people will vote. <laughs> Amy optimized. Tracy wasn't so positive because of experience in shady smoker room deals, but he knew that Samus had a shot, except there were Republicans everywhere, and he had to be a tough one. Election had been close, but in the end, someone always won. But would it be Samus? Over the week before the election, there were many deal seals and campaigns. Campton Falcon used his money like everyone thought, and bought ads that smeared across the intercom. One even said that Samus did you know what with a lobbyist. For everyone unclear, lobbyists wait around in people of lobby of Congress and buy drinks and tickets for senators so they vote for high gas prices and less trees. Luckily, Samus was a Democrat, so people knew she wasn't into that shit. It was a bumpy road, Dee, but it was a time for the debate. Okay, welcome to the 72 memorial debates. Principal Yokoi kicked off the dramatics. Everyone knows the candidates, and now it's time to hear about the issues. The first question is for you, Mr. Falcon, journalized Silux, the president of the class newspaper. What are your feelings about global warming? Captain Falcon cooled with a simmering snap. My real question is what are you feeling about global warming? Falcon sleaze stepped the issues. All of the Republicans cheered because they were too stupid to understand that Falcon had not answered questions and was only sucking his guts. Thank you, Mr. Falcon. Dr. Samus, how do you feel about the World War Three? Silex discretionized. All eyes were on Samus as she formulated her position, but she remained cucumber cool and answered, War is not the option, but if it's necessary, then it must happen for people. War never changes. Many people clapped except for the Falcon Republicans who were too stupid to know about wars. They're not real Republicans. <laughs> joke, 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 joke. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the debate, and it is time to choose the candidates. But remember not to choose popular people, or only when your heart is after. Yokoi Disney channeled, but everyone knew that people would vote for the populace. But who was the most? The votes were just about to be tallied, and Samus was taking a walk through halls when she heard a strange rumbling bumbling noise from the boiler room. What could it be? She investigated, as she opened the door and was shocked to find... A political machine! Ha <laughs> ha! You caught us trying to rig votes with a copying machine, yes! Snaked up Captain Falcon, an ex facto Candon who had joined with other Republicans. They looked serious, but Samus was too. That's unacceptable! Samus furied as she began to use jitsu signs and stances, but Candon summoned bodyguards. Who was it? Craid and the gang! Luckily, Samus was used to fighting these losers, so she took them all out with her techniques and attacks and soon they were piled on the floors. You may have defeated Ilias, but what about me? Captain Falcon punched Samus, but she dodged and dumbass Falcon fell out of the window he punched so hard. Candon ran away because he didn't want to get caught, but Hall Monitor Noxus jailed him for conspiracies against the populace. And what about Samus? Congratulations! Congratulion, President Iran, Principal Yokoi inaugurated Samus to the presidency, and there was many cheers among the crowd, even a few rhinos who were sort of like Democrats. Everything was going well, but right, as Samus signed the articles and was about to enact the A clause, a voice could be heard of the announcer. Hello to the people of the school, it is I, Captain, no, Emperor Falcon. I have taken over the office, and I'm now the president of the school! Yes! Principal Yokoi was befuzzled, but he was a bozo cop and didn't even know what to do. The school was under siege! My first order of bi- My first order of business is that Samus Ryan, who thinks that she president of class, is arrested for treason against Falcon government! The captain hardline, as you could hear Craven gang members in the background snacking and sneaking in the situation. When she is arrested, she is to be killed and displayed for public appeal. 
Samasai is narrowed. She may have won the election, but she would would she win the insurrection? The Metroid High School election was over. The Metroid Civil War had just begun. Okay, I wrote that in a huff, so I'm sorry if there were spelling mistakes or grammar bad, but I do the best I can. I hope chapter isn't a year like last one, but things happen in life and you never know. Until next time, live you life and prosper. I watched Star Wars this weekend. I can't wait for the new one with Matt Damon, not a Trekkie, but Damon's hot. Hello everyone! Wow, it's been a while. It's been a little more than three whole years since I started writing Metroid High School, and I can't believe how many people have loved it. 63 reviews, almost 10,000 hits. I wouldn't be able to do it without... You guys are the best. Thank you. I was only 11 when I wrote Chapter 1 of MHS, and lots of things have happened since. I started writing, but now... She was only 11? I barely have more time anymore because of school tests and my new boyfriend. He's real, not internet this time. So I don't exactly have time to write fanfic anymore. I have had chappies written for months on my hard drive, but I really just want to get the story finished on with life, so I've decided to unload and take elements from each chapter for one big finale. It doesn't always make exact sense, but hey, it's epic, hopefully, and tires all the loose ends into fitful conclusion. I think that I've had enough for the talk. It's time for... Endgame finale. The halls of a high school. Metroid High School. Dances, gossip, girls. Students learning. Everything had happened. Samus and Ridley's ask out. The football, the cholera, and even the election. But now, war stains. In the hall, civil war was raging before it had even started. Falcon's kitchen cabinet, author's note, I learned about this in US history. Andrew Jackson liked his buddies, so he gave them jobs eating food and partying in the White House. Was in control of the school. Luckily, Samus and friends were not pushovers, so it was a bloody situation. Mandy and Tio Juan were two of the people who were fighting in the onslaught. Tio, catch! Helen addicted as her Mexican caught the grenade she tossed at him. With teeth, he pulled out the tad and threw killing seven or more Republicans. Too bad one of the key hunt hinters still had a trick up his sleeve and it was a pistol! It flied at Helen, mortally wounding his soulmate. Tio, Juan, Helen coughed, but was cut off by the river of death. Ah oh, no, Helen! Tio Juan was insoluble. This turned him into a killing machine. He had lost his favorite girlfriend. His friend? For war? For what? War never changes. The underground art room was where Samus, Amy, Adam, and Principal Yokoi were discussing war games, except not Warhammer or Battlefront, but the kind that countries do before a war. Except, this one was already happening. What are we screwed? Principal Gunpei Yokoi extruded in the room. Luckily, no one noticed his bozo fits and carried on with the meeting. President Aran, here's the ordeal, Amy, her friend and advisor, protrude. Falcon and the Republican army have learned how to control key hunters. That's where they have so many bodies everywhere. This did not look like it was going to be a happy ending, but a shadow appeared in the corner, and it was a good thing that they didn't shoot, because it was only a truce. If you can give me and the game do time, I believe that we can call in reinforcements, Trace converted. No one liked industrial espionage, but they agreed that they just like Samus, said in speech that things must be different when there's a war. Okay, I see the ideas, but what are we going to do in the meantime? Adam noted that there might not be enough time for Game Dude's scheme, and there was way too many enemies to take down with just poses and political allies. That's when a voice was heard at the door. It was someone that Samus did not expect. You have my body, Ridley, Ridley Legolas. And when everyone turned around, they saw him. He was Mecha Ridley, and he was in a robotic combat suit like Metroid Fusion. Samus was happy to see him first, but quickly remembered everything. Sex, cholera, Cervantes, was it too much? Samus, Samus, I know things that have happened, and maybe I'm too manhandle, but we must fight to save the school, dude. Let's worry about things later, because we have lots of ass to kick right now. Samus was speechless, but murmured, Okay, because she knew that things were too important to bicker.
Things were a disaster. Bodies were beginning to pile. And the halls were slippery with blood. Two friends, Chris and Johnny B, were with Mandy trying to enter Falcon's office headquarters through a secret door in the underground of the school. Too bad that Falcon knew the school too and rigged it with mines. Unfortunately for Mandy. Ah! She exulted as her body was derailed by explosives. John and Chris felt sorry for their loss, but they knew that this was the price of war. And that they, that they didn't stop Falcon's inflation, it would just get higher. In another part of the battlefront, Samus and Ridley were using their new armor powers to do serious damage to the enemy bodies. Ted, Robbie, Smiley, and the heartbroken Tio Juan were also contributing to the death toll, and it seemed that the tide was beginning to rise for the better. That was until an old enemy appeared, this time for the finals. Well, 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 we meet again, Kraut. crowed Crade and his goons. You think you can win this war? You'll have to go through us. It's time to reveal the gang. Everyone was shocked as the true identities were revealed of Crade's gang members. Silex, Noxus, Candon, Weevil, and Spire. And the gang war began as Samus, Ridley, Teo, Ted, Smiley, and Robbie got into place to fight the enemies. Ted lunged at Noxus and shanked at him, but Silex was quick to notice and shot Ted in the foot. Both gangbangers were ended, though when Tier one saved Ted's ass by firing Mexican machine guns at them, killing them in the head. Silex transformed into a machine gun turret and took out Robbie and part of Smiley, but Samus was quick to the draw and fired a super missile, feropicizing both Nilex, Silex and Noxus. This did not make Candon happy, and the two ex-presidents battled it out. As usual though, Samus ended up on top and shot electro powers into his brainstem. That left just Ridley and Craid. You may have won the gang war, but what about this? Craig injected enzymes in his arm as he began to grow massive. There was a hole in the ceiling when Craig stopped getting bigger, and he started to stomp on students and even Ridley. I have you in my foot! Craig soliloquied as he was about to step on Ridley's face, but... Sinners! Mother Brain decloaked from her nun clothes and unleashed a Swiss guard, that's the Pope's army, hand training at Craig and the Keat Hunters. This gave Ridley just enough time to shoot his eyelids at Craig's foot, knocking the evil over. Uh oh, the Grand Wizard rapped, but it was too late. Fuck you in hell, dude! Ch no, fuck you in hell! chanted Ridley and stuck his suit's robotail in Craig's face. It was a lot of blood, but at least the score was settled. The war was about ready to wrap up, but there was one last issue. The imposter president. Samus and her remaining allies were finally able to break into his office fortress. But where was he? Going somewhere? There was a voice, and as they turned down the hall, zoomed a race car that was armed like the Batman car in the Dark Knight. Captain Falcon! Samus and co. condoled, but there was little use. Samus tried her powerful missiles at the car, but they just bounced off the hood and blew the doors off classrooms, exposing the children. Ridley used his mecha suit powers to try and stomp the car, but Captain was too fast with his driving and dodged. His turn. Let's see, who's the real president now, bitch? Captain Falcon bellowed the car intercom, and used his presidential codes to arm the rocket tube with a mini nuke. When it fired, everyone was sure that this was the end of Samus. But just in time, her boyfriend jumped in front of the missile and took the blast himself. Luckily, his suit was radiation resistant. Unfortunately, the nuke blast damaged it beyond repair. Ridley was down, and so was Samus. Ha ha ha! My ride is indestructible! Falcon banned at it. There isn't a single weapon on Earth that can defy my Dragonaut! That's what we're here for! A sudden voice blasted through the roof. Oh! A sudden voice blasted through the roof. And when the dust cleared, there was four fingers. It was Shazo Kays, Ethereal, Crute, and Tail Deer from Dark Crusade High School. This part was written when Cervantes and I were still internet dating. That's long gone, but why waste a story? I told you guys that reinforcements were on the way, the game dude and Trace revealed over the intercom. And Samus and Ridley were revealed. Relieved, but not Captain Falcon. Time to seal the deal, crowed Landode. And while... 
And while he and Ethereal distracted the Falcon car by racing it through the hall at top gear, Taildreer and Shash did a power combine for one final blow. When the car rounded the last corner, it unleashed, totaling the jugger car and ending the driver. There were last words, however. I may be dead, but you still lose. You still got the cholera. Your dad is mine. The dead president gurgled, as Sama saw only she could hear him. The war was over, but the girl knew he was right. It was only a matter of time. Few people can survive in war, but for those who do, it's worth to save lives. This is what Samus was explaining to the survivors of Metroid High School. All her remaining friends were there, and so were her mom, Miss Chozu, and Dog Sparky. Samus was giving a good, great speech, but she felt the darkness taking hold. Dark Samus and the cholera were finally taking over her body. When she collapsed on the floor, people began to crowd around and cry, Please, is there a way? Right, Ridley cried out to the gods. There is, confined Dr. Bannis, who drove up to the podium in the sport car, and revealing a hypodermic needle of serum in it. You found a cure! Everyone cheered. Dr. Bannis turned to her patient. I may not agree with your sex, but I won't see a patient suffer, even a sin widow. The Dr. Hippocrates and injected the liquid into Samus's body. The cholera syndromes began to fade away, but the doctor was not ready to give up without a fight. Arg! Samus coughed blood, and a white began to flash. As Samus convulsed, Dark Samus began to materialize out of her body. Ha 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 ha! Dark Samus satanically echoed. Thanks to your cure, I'm finally free! Dark Samus started running around, taking down students and teachers and eating their souls to gain power. Now that she was cured, Samus was at full power and did her best to fight Dark Samus before it had inflicted too many casualties. Unfortunately, Dark Samus was already far too powerful, and all that Samus could do was knock the helmet off its body to reveal its identity. No one could have expected the truth. Coach Houston, you're Dark Samus? The entire school was shocked in disbelief. Houston only smiled with all his teeth. I admit, I made the cholera. I couldn't have Ridley and Samus be dating because she needs to be a team player, and boyfriends take time, Houston explained from experience. There is nothing more important than sports, and you can't stop me. Not exactly. At the moment, the doors flew open, and there was a sound of a gunshot. At the door was President Gerald Ford. Finally spelled it right, if you're wondering, he was still president when Metroid High School took place. With a sniping pistol in his hand, and 50 Secret Service agents who took control of the situation, Huston was choked. His idol had just shot him in the face. But you played football. Why? Houston was confounded in his final moments of his life, but Ford explained, Everyone, sports can be fun to play, and are good for bodies, but sometimes people take it too far. It's not worth it to make biological terror or start wars, but as long as you keep it clean, keep it real. The real president finished the speech, and with that he returned to the White House, leaving Ridley and Samus alone. Everything was about to be sorted, but there was still one last thing that was troubling Ridley's mind. Samus could tell because they had been going out for a time, and she inquisited, Ridley, what's the issue? Well, it's only three more days until the big prom, and I, I know we're not together anymore. Ridley shoveled uncomfortably, but Samus was warm with a kiss. Ridley, I can't stay mad at you. You know the love when you feel it. And they kissed in front of the entire remaining school, Everyone cheered, including Principal Yokoi, Shas, Tier One, Amy, Mrs. Chozo, and even Cervantes cracked a grin. Damn, thought Ridley for the final time. I'm the luckiest guy in the universe. Epilogue, 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 epilogue. Samus and Ridley went to prom together as a couple, but Samus' ex-boyfriends didn't do so bad at all. Cervantes went with 111 Samus Ridley Forever 2006 because they were both angsty and thought cool, and Amy went with Adam, not just because of their shared letters, but because they had other commons. In George Bush's last minute in office, he excommunicated all aliens, so Tier 1 had to go back to Mexico in the middle of the night? Too bad for Bush, he ran for president of Mexico and won. 
My dad told me that Mexico will probably be more powerful than the United States in a few years, so that's not so bad. Principal Yokoi decided to retire after the events, but then he learned how to make video games for Nintendo and made the game Metroid, because based on everything that happened at Metroid High School. As for Samus and Ridley, they decided to stick together and see what happens. They decided to postpone the pe pregnancy until after marriage, because even though Juno is a movie, teens don't always make parents in real life. So they had an abortion. You can't just postpone the pregnancy. That's just wrong. And the next time they had sex, Samus remembered to have her own pregnancy test. After three years and eleven days, my fanfiction career has officially come to a close. I couldn't have done it without you guys are the best. I've tried a lot of new things when writing, like words and ideas and all kinds of weariedness. And even though some of you don't like it, and it didn't make sense the whole time, at least it's something. I'm going to miss you guys so much. But hey, don't forget to review. Thank you all so much, and never forget, Samus and Ridley forever. The end. Well, my dear viewers, there we have it. A tale fit for the ages, I must say. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was certainly a very exciting ride. We fell invested with the art of Ridley and Samus finally coming back together after facing adversity. Such a very touching story. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. I very much appreciate it. Next time... We'll try and find another long-form fanfiction, because I actually quite enjoyed these. But anyway, I hope you're all doing very well, and thank you for sticking around. So, have a very good evening, my dear viewers, and be sure to tune in next time for the next Bad Fanfiction Live. And until then, toodle-pip, and good night. <laughs>